Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Here's a little quiz to start the video off for today. What does Nesrax Sin and Dawn Cause both share in common? Is it A, they are the best exotics for warlocks to use in the final shape? B, they make their elemental subclasses really OP? C, they can be used with any subclass you like? Or D, they provide the best fashion option? Now, if you chose D, we need to have a few words after the video, as C is the correct answer, and why this will be the focus of today's video. We covered Nezrak Sin's prismatic build the other day as a jack of all trades build that could be used wherever you like, and the idea worked out really well for something like prismatics overall. So today, I want to show another similar version that uses Dawn Chorus as the main basis of the build, and why this is also a surprisingly powerful build to use wherever you like. Let's start with the general aim and exotic of the build. Our aim is to make sure our prismatic energy and overall ability energy is kept filled at all times. This can be achieved with Dawn Cores and Exotic Trait, plus fragments and aspects being used. We also need to make sure we actively use our mini for both debuffing and actively updating our Darkness Transcends energy refill at the same time. For this, we will be using Dawn Chorus and Sunshot. Let's start with Dawn Chorus with his exotic effect, Rites of Ember. It states, your Daybreak projectiles deal more damage and scores targets on impact. Your Scorch is improved and you gain a small amount of mini energy when your Scorch damages targets. The first line of the exotic requires users to use a specific solo super to maximize his damage, which we shouldn't care too much about. His second line though is where the build would excel the most in, as anything we have available that can Scorch will apply this effect to us. This means using a weapon with incandescent or using the Helion aspect will grant us mini energy back per Scorch made. You can of course see where I'm going with this. Our second exotic is Sunshot with his exotic effect, Sunburn, which states, This weapon fires explosive rounds and highlights targets that take damage from Sunshot. Is a secondary perk effect is where the weapon will excel the most at with the exotic chosen, as each kill made will not only cause a large explosion, affecting others, but will also scorch them along the way. This is handy for a lot of content, but it's honestly going to work best with the grouped up enemies, as multiple scorched enemies at once means you're getting back a huge amount of melee energy in the process. Any weapon that applies scorch is fine to use here, so don't fret that you need to use one thing like shown. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Feed the Void where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate Devour. Helion, where activating your class ability will produce a solar mortem that will lob flame projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. A facet of sacrifice, where while you have an arc, solar or void buff, ability thunder blows will grant bonus darkness transcendence energy. A facet of coverage, where arc, solar and void abilities do more damage to targets affected by darkness debuff. A facet of dawn, where getting a powered melee hit grants you radiant. Powered melee final blows makes you an allies radiant. Fast of Balance, while rapidly defeating light targets grants mini energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Fast of Ruin, which will increase the shatter damage of your status crystals or frozen targets. It will also increase the ignition size of Solar Ignition Blast. As a setup, we'll heavily use Solar Scores to enhance our gameplay. Having Fast of Ruin and Coverage will be highly recommended just for the overall increase in damage. From there, Sacrifice will help with garnering darkness energy fast via the arcane needles of weapons being used, and this will further lead into how Facet of Dawn will stay active for such a long time as well, while Facet of Balance will do its part as well. I recommend you use arcane needles for the build as you can get free to use, which will be handy for triggering a number of fragments as shown. Most importantly, this will affect how fast we can get our prismatic form available, as darkness side of things tends to be the slowest depending on the primary being used. Having this, and using it like shown, is where the build will excel the most, and you can use other melees if you like, you don't have to use just what I have shown. But if you want to make the most out of it, this is the best way forward. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with strength also playing a part. You don't need to worry about having max stats for strength, since Dawn Core's exotic effect will help with cooldown. Having a tier 6 with selected mods should be enough for the rest of the build to play out fine. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devour will be enough. 
A discipline we have all at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via storm grenades. Now either storm or vortex are both fine to use here, with storm having the lowest cooldown available. I've chosen storm simply over this small factor here, and this AoE is also impressive to tag multiple enemies at once for me. Since grenades won't play a huge part of the build, you can use the following mods to expand your current skill set. Having impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Focusing Strike for a 12% class ability buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% melee buff, Orbs of Restoration for a 10% all ability buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods which are highly recommended were the following Harmonic Siphon for creating also power via matching subclass weapon, Charged Up times 1 for a plus 1 armor stacks we carry, Solar Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% solar weapon buff, Ashes the Assets for a super energy regen via grenades, and lastly, Heavy Finder, Reserves, and Scavenger Ammo mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. As we have covered our Zodia Primary, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. A secondary, I have the Core with Warper Weapon and Slice. A powerful sidearm, which I would recommend everyone gain on farm as soon as possible. This role is viable for the build, not only against mages and bosses I face, but also the debuff aspect and slow regeneration of Darkness Transcendence energy over time. Ideally, you ought to follow the same, but having status variant also works out just fine. Heavy, we have the Typhon GL5 with Chill Clip and Demolitionist. Although status rocket launcher with Chill Clip is also fine. The grenade launcher is handy for applying the slow and freeze effect much faster and within less ammo used. This is quite powerful when being used against overloaded and unstoppable champions in endgame, so not only is it allowing us to deep of targets, but it will play a bigger role if used in endgame like shown. Just like on Nezarek's Sin version we did a while back, the following is excellent as a jack of all trades build for players who want to get as creative as possible when using Prismatic. It has everything you would want from healing, fast ability and prismatic regeneration, increased weapon damage, anti-champion loadout, debuff and buffs, a fast melee charge, etc. And quite honestly, I'm surprised I haven't heard much people talk about this exotic mom in the same case as Nezrax Sin. Although Nezrax offers ability energy for all your abilities per kill mate, a Dawn Chorus is more limited down to your melee for seeing the buffs as mentioned. However, this gets all linked back to the mods and fragments being used, to where this sort of thing becomes more viable down the line. For example, as long as Helion is active, or I'm getting a scorch hit on a target, my melee will recharge for as long as the burn lasts. This then gets linked back to Feed the Void for the grenade regen, a melee for pocking arcane needles, unraveling effect, and balance which will regen both our melee and grenades faster. It may not be a one to one when compared to Nesrax's full effect, but it can provide similar results. Ultimately, what the build becomes is best is how fast you can get your prismatic form up and running, and then use that to greatly enhance your abilities and damage over the given time. Having unraveling, solar ignitions, and faster coverage makes for an interesting combo if you like to nuke enemies and keep that flow going for as long as you like. Overall, I can't see much of a downside for the build, as the build is designed around gathering ability energy via kills made by you. And for how simple that is to achieve for such a build, it makes it a perfect jack of all trade build for solo players in mind. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. The link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.